Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Woodpecker's Deep Dive. My name's Jeff Ferris. Welcome to the Woodpecker's Model Shop. Today, we're going to have a project where we're going to use several Woodpecker's tools. The projects today all involve circles and arcs. We're going to use Woodpecker's Deluxe Trammel System and our multifunction router base to cut some arcs. And what arcs are we going to cut? Well, we're going to make a decorative wall hanging of the man in the moon. We're also going to give you a link for a PDF of the pattern for the man in the moon wall hanging that you can make yourself in your shop. Okay, let's get started. Now to me, uh, the pattern in quilted or curly maple has always reminded me of the surface of the moon. That's what inspired this project. Uh, we had some quilted maple that we're selling through our Woodpecker's wood shop. And I had a couple of pieces that made their way into the model shop. Uh, and when I looked at them, it just looked like the moon to me. So we decided that that's what we're going to do today. This one is kind of unfortunate. This huge knot in here kind of makes it not really usable because the knot is not tight. We can't really include that in a furniture or cabinet project. So I took one of the patterns and cut it out. And we're going to use this to roughly position the moon where we want it to be. Now we're trying to work around that big knot. So we'll kind of see if we can go around that and maybe pick up just a little bit of the darkness surrounding the knot for our pattern. I'm going to take a little bit of masking tape and secure that down. Now I am the world's worst at tracing a pattern. So what I would rather do with this is get my lines precise by using a compass. So we're going to locate the axis point of each one of these arcs and we're going to do that geometrically by using a compass. All I need to do is mark a couple of positions on the perimeter. So we'll mark one here and we'll mark one at the back side and then we'll double check that with one out here on the perimeter at the outside on the far end. Then for our blue arc we need two points of that. One up by his nose and then on the green arc same thing, we'll do the bridge of his nose and the peak. Now we'll take the radius of each one of those arcs and locate the center of the circle. So we'll take our deluxe trammel system and we're going to set that on the first mark on the outside perimeter and strike a small arc. Now we'll come out to the one on the outside. Same thing, we'll set that. And that intersection is our axis point. Just to double check that, we'll come out here on the outside perimeter, set, and confirm that it intersects at exactly the same point. That is our 18 inch circle with the deluxe trammel system set at eight inches on the beam, and then we have plus one on our pencil holder. Nine inch radius, 18 inch circle. Now let's set up for the first of the smaller arcs. So above his nose is an 11.875 inch diameter circle. So half of that is five and 15 sixteenths. And we've got the inch that we have to add here. So I wanna set my pointer at four and 15 sixteenths. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna to go to a point on the perimeter of the green arc. Strike an arc. And then we'll come over here, also on the perimeter. And that intersection is the center of our green arc. Now the blue arc is 12 and 3 eighths. So half of that is 6 and 3 sixteenths. So that means we want to set the beam of the ducks trammel at 5 and 3 sixteenths. And once again, we'll come to the perimeter, strike a line, do the same thing at the other end. There is the center of our blue circle. Now we're gonna get rid of our pattern 
and draw those in. So our deluxe trammel is still set up for 5 and 3 16 so we'll start with that one and draw that in. Now we'll go back to 4 and 15 16 Now we'll set the beam to 8 inches again. We'll draw the big arc and connect the two points. Now I've got to come in here, put my pattern back in place, and we have to kind of pencil in his nose on this arc, on the blue arc right about there, and come around like that. And we'll do all that by hand after we use the router to make the main curves. Now the first step in setting up the multifunction router base is to get each one of those axis points with an eighth of an inch hole in it. So we'll grab an auto line drill guide and drill our three axis points. Now the hardest one of these to drill is the one, the, the lower arc below his nose because it has to stop right at the bottom of his nose. So we'll do the hardest one first. Now the reason I like to draw the layout lines very precisely here is uh, trying to measure the position of the bit is kind of tricky. So what I'm going to do here is with the rotation pin of the multifunction router base in the hole, I'm going to adjust the router until it's right at my cut line. So the router bit is right at the end of his nose where I want it to stop. To make sure that I stop exactly on that point with all three of my passes, I'm going to set up a stop that will limit the MFRB at that point. Now it'll stop at that point every time I make a pass. I'm going to do this in three cuts, each one just a little bit deeper. When we did the first deep dive on the multifunction router base, I was doing uh, uh, some arcs and when I was cutting them, I was cutting all the way through the material. Uh, that gives you a really nice clean edge, but it causes some problems. For one thing, I cut into my tabletop. Uh, that wasn't a big deal on that particular project because it was an old MFT top that was due for replacement anyway. But now on my brand new miter saw station, I don't want to cut my top. So I want to show you a little trick that actually is safer and better. I'm going to cut this almost all the way through. And you can see I've left about a quarter of an inch here. We're going to take this cut and cut that last quarter of an inch out with the bandsaw. Then we're going to go to the router table with a flush trim bit and clean up the bandsaw edge. It'll be a perfect fit Everything will stay together while it's on the cutting table. It's safer, cleaner, and better, and you don't cut into your table. So the other small arc intersects the axis point for the big circle. So we've got to cut the big circle first. To cut the larger circle, I need to add the extension rods so that we can move our axis point a little bit further away from the router bit. Okay, the extension is installed. <clears throat> we have our axis set up for nine inches and we're ready to go.
Okay, now we're ready to set up and do our third and final arc. Now we're ready to go to the bandsaw and get rid of all the waste. Now we'll go to the router table and take off that last little edge using a flush trim to follow our routed line. Now I'm going to use a rasp to shape up his nose and make it look like a nose. Then we'll come back to the router table with a roundover bit and soften all the edges. So I cleaned up his nose so that it looks like a nose. I also came out here on the points. Those are really kind of sharp where the two circles intersect. So I softened those a little bit. Now we're ready to round over. So we're all good to go now. Uh, just a little sanding, uh, some finish, and whether or not we put an eye on it, that's entirely up to you. There's one in the pattern. You can do it like I did on this one with just a little bit of light stain, rub it out really good and you get just the hint of an eye, or you can do it with acrylic paint and get a real strong eye. Uh, or you can go with the other side of the moon and not have any eye at all. It's entirely up to you. The pattern, it's there on the pattern for you. This is available as a PDF download uh, and it's free. Just uh, download it from the website. There's a link down below in the description. Now, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I'd ask you to do that and also hit the notification bell. That way you'll know about every one of our videos right when they come out. And if you'd like to know more about any of the tools that we use today, the work holding system, the deluxe trammel system, the multifunction router base, there are links for all of those down below in the description and the first deep dive video on the multifunction router base. There's a link for that right over here. Hope you enjoyed the show today. If you did, give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next time on Woodpecker's Deep Dive.